Giant cell arteritis, also known as temporal arteritis, is an inflammatory disease of large blood vessels that characteristically involves the temporal artery. In this scene, I'll give you a visual mnemonic to easily remember the causes and clinical findings of this disease. First, let's quickly review what a vasculitis even is. Vasculitides are caused by autoimmune damage to endothelial cells, which line the blood vessels. This autoimmune damage can then lead to a number of problems, such as ischemia or even vessel rupture. Before jumping into this video, I want to talk quickly about how vasculitis can lead to ischemia. First, damage to endothelial cells exposes subendothelial collagen and tissue factor, which promotes coagulation. This leads to clot formation, which can block the vessel and lead to ischemia. Chronic fibrin deposition and scarring over time can also decrease the diameter of the vessel lumen, further contributing to ischemia. This relationship between vasculitis and ischemia is an important one, and it will help us explain some of the findings we'll touch on in this video, so be sure to keep this relationship in mind. Alrighty then, let's head on over to the side of our scene, the ruins of some prehistoric civilization. One thing I never understood was these guys' love for giant heads. No, no, not the talking heads, the giant heads. This giant head is here to help you remember the disease, giant cell arteritis. Giant for giant cell, get it? The name actually has a deeper meaning though. If you take a biopsy of blood vessels in these patients, you'll find giant cells. These are multinucleated inflammatory cells created by the fusion of macrophages and dendritic cells. We'll get back to the biopsy findings later, but for now, just remember this giant head to remember both the name giant cell arteritis as well as the biopsy finding of giant cells. Next, take a look at those vines growing on top of this giant head. These red vines make me think of arteries, and the location of these red vines makes me think of the temporal artery specifically. Yep, the temporal artery flows near the temples of the head. Who would have guessed? Giant cell arteritis classically involves the temporal arteries, which is why this disease is also called temporal arteritis. Well, originally, there were vines on both sides of the head, but now there's just a big crater on one side. Something must have hit this giant head's head. Ouch, looks like that's gotta hurt. This large crater reminds me of the unilateral headache that is seen in the temporal region. This location should make sense since you know that the pain is caused by temporal artery inflammation. Just picture this crater on one side of the head and you'll remember that pain usually affects only one side. Cool, now let's look to the back and examine this large body of water. Yeah, it's an ocean. These civilizations always develop near the ocean, right? Notice how the sunset has made the ocean look kind of red. Kind of like blood, right? This large amount of blood red liquid should help you remember large blood vessels. That's right, giant cell arteritis affects large blood vessels, since it is a large vessel vasculitis. And what's larger than the ocean, am I right? GCA affects the branches of the carotid artery, which just so happens to include the temporal artery that we just mentioned. Just remember the large body of water here, and you'll remember to look for large blood vessels. Next, notice how the temple is constructed out of a special kind of rock. It's red and kind of reminds me of sedimentation. This red sedimentary stone should help you remember the sedimentation of red blood cells, also known as the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The erythrocyte sedimentation rate or ESR, is a surrogate for inflammation. ESR is increased in giant cell arteritis, which makes sense since giant cell arteritis is an inflammatory disease of the blood vessels. Recall, the suffix itis literally means inflammation. This should be pretty obvious, so I'm just going to move on. Next, let's talk about the people here. Yep, that elderly woman is a grandma. And boy, does she look upset. My grandma should also help you remember the giant cell arteritis classically occurs in elderly women. Specifically, the disease usually occurs in patients over 50 years of age, with an average age of onset of about 70 years old. So why is this important? Well, it's because you have to differentiate giant cell arteritis with another large vessel vasculitis. That's right, I'm talking about Takayasu arteritis. The easiest way to do this is by age. Takayasu arteritis also affects large blood vessels, but it's generally found in young Asian women usually under the age of 40. A mnemonic that I like is that patients with giant cell arteritis have giant ages. Or in other words, they're much older. Just remember this elderly grandma, and you'll remember that giant cell arteritis is a disease of elderly women. Anyway, this symbol is a two-parter. You see, grannies are a recurring symbol for granulomas, or granny-lomas, if you will. Get it? Granny for granuloma? 
Granulomas are found in giant cell arteritis, and they describe a focus of inflammation consisting of a lot of macrophages surrounded by a collar of lymphocytes, kind of like in this picture here. I won't get into the basics of pathology here, but just remember my granny, and you'll never forget the presence of granulomas in giant cell arteritis. Now, now, let's take a look at what grandma's wearing. You see, ever since we got here, grandma's been uttering strange things, and she's really become a lot more tribal. She picked up these red feathers somewhere, and she's been wearing them on her shoulders and hips. Personally, I think they're cursed. Weirdly, these red feathers around the shoulders and hips makes me think of inflammation around the shoulders and hips. In the context of elderly women, I'm referring to polymyalgia rheumatica, of course. Polymyalgia rheumatica is an inflammatory disease of elderly women. It is characterized by aching and stiffness at the hips and shoulders, and it is highly associated with the onset of giant cell arteritis. Just remember the red feathers here, and you'll remember this important link. But a new fashion sense is not the only thing Grandma picked up. Earlier today, she got really excited, and started muttering something about a sacrifice. And how I wasn't necessary anymore. Uh, Grandma, why are you pointing that knife at me? Actually, we'll talk about that knife in a second, but first let me introduce myself. Grandma put me in a blindfold earlier, telling me it'd be much easier if I didn't watch. All I can say is that I'm pretty much blind in here. This blindfold also reminds me of blindness, a potential complication of giant cell arteritis. As you already know, giant cell arteritis involves branches of the carotid artery, which includes the ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery provides most of the blood flow to the eye, so if it undergoes ischemia and temporal arteritis, this can result in irreversible blindness. This is a very high yield fact, since preventing blindness makes giant cell arteritis a medical emergency. We'll touch back on the treatment side of things later, but for now, just remember my blindfold to remember that irreversible blindness can occur in giant cell arteritis. No, don't do it, Grandma. I'm just going to slowly back up here into the mouth of this giant head. Wait, yikes, there's spikes in there. Oh man, I'm pretty scared now. Nearly got chewed to a painful end in there. The painful chewing brought on by this mouth helps me remember jaw claudication, by the way. Jaw claudication is just a fancy term for painful chewing, and this can occur since the maxillary artery is also affected in giant cell arteritis. The maxillary artery is a branch of the external carotid artery, and it supplies the muscles of the jaw for chewing. Remember that whole intro where I talked about vasculitis leading to ischemia? Well, when you chew, your jaw requires additional blood flow to keep those jaw muscles a pumping. In patients with GCA, this increase in demand can't be fulfilled so patients develop ischemia. Therefore, ischemia in the maxillary artery can cause pain with chewing. Makes sense, right? All right, Grandma, I've had just about enough. Put that knife down. Yeah, I'm talking about that scalpel-like thing. Nope, you're not taking any samples from me today. By the way, this scalpel reminds me of biopsy, since getting tissue samples is necessary for confirming a diagnosis of giant cell arteritis. We've already mentioned the pathologic findings of granulomas in giant cells, and to confirm the diagnosis, you need to take a temporal artery biopsy looking for these granulomas in giant cells. If you find them, you know you have the right diagnosis. But wait, grandma, isn't that scalpel a little short? That's right, the pathology findings in GCA are focal. In other words, only parts of the artery are affected. And if you biopsy from the wrong spot, you can actually miss the pathologic findings. Which brings me back to the short scalpel. Short biopsies may miss the diagnosis, so you have to take longer sections of the artery. Consequently, a negative biopsy can't completely rule out the disease. Whoa, what's that? Oh, it's an asteroid. Anyways, I'm saved. That asteroid hit this giant head right before grandma got to me. Hmm, I guess that's where the crater on this head came from. Anyways, asteroids remind me of steroids. Asteroid for steroid. Get it? High-dose corticosteroids, like dexamethasone, are used to treat giant cell arteritis. And this asteroid arriving before grandma got a biopsy should help you remember that treatment in giant cell arteritis should be given before confirming the diagnosis. Wait, what? Treatment before diagnosis? Why is that? Well, recall from before that untreated giant cell arteritis can cause irreversible blindness by occluding the ophthalmic artery. Again, this is a medical emergency. Even if we are not sure of the diagnosis, the possibility of blindness is just way too bad to wait for a biopsy. Therefore, we give steroids 
before diagnostic confirmation to prevent the possibility of blindness. The way this is tested is by giving you a patient with the telltale signs of giant cell arteritis. I'm talking about an elderly woman with painful chewing and a unilateral headache, just like grandma here. The question will then ask, what's the next step in management? After seeing this, you should know to pick the treatment first. This is high yield, and it just may help you save a person's vision down the line. Alternatively, it could just help you get another question right, and you can get that derm residency you've always dreamed of. Whatever your motivation, just remember this asteroid getting here before grandma got her biopsy, and you'll have this fact down. And that's it, folks, for giant cell arteritis. It's been a harrowing day. Let's recap. Giant cell arteritis, also called temporal arteritis, is an inflammatory disease affecting the large blood vessels, such as the carotid arteries and its branches. The classic branch affected is the temporal artery, resulting in unilateral headache. Other branches affected include the maxillary artery, which results in jaw claudication, and the ophthalmic artery, whose involvement can cause irreversible blindness. The disease is classically seen in elderly women, and it is often associated with another disease, polymyalgia rheumatica. Additionally, all of the blood vessel inflammation going on leads to a characteristically elevated ESR, which is an acute phase reactant slash inflammatory marker. Diagnosis is confirmed by biopsy of the temporal artery, and pathologic findings include granulomas and giant cells. These findings are focal, however, so short temporal artery biopsies can miss any findings. Finally, the most important thing to remember about GCA is that treatment with high-dose steroids should be started before diagnostic confirmation. This is because delayed treatment can lead to ophthalmic artery involvement and subsequent blindness, which makes giant cell arteritis a medical emergency. Hey, Grandma, so what happened to you anyway? Thought you loved me. <sighs> it's okay. I forgive you. You're still my grandma. Let's just get on to the next image. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarize.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.